Hello and welcome. Coming to you again, not quite live from One Take Studios, where today's topic deals with standard deviation. I'm not going to specifically explain standard deviation, but I'd like to look at some of the ways that it might be applied. This is not applications in what most people would consider to be word problems kind of stuff. This is definitely applications you know that could happen in the real world, but this is more... I want to show you the structure that we can put standard deviation into to create future uses. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. All right, so there's two applications I'd like you to see today, and the first one is called the coefficient of variation. And the coefficient of variation is this. We're going to take our standard deviation, SD, and express it as a percent of the mean. In other words, coefficient of variation simply compares the standard deviation for a data, how far it's spread out, with the mean of the data, the center of the data. Why would you do that? Well, standard deviation and mean both are based on units of some kind. And if I'm looking at two different sets of data, and I've got the variation for the one and the variation for the other, it's hard sometimes with units to compare between populations and get a good comparison. So, I promised to show you kind of what I'm talking about here. There are two formulas for this. And again, there are two formulas because, oh look, let's see, S, that's the letter I'm used to seeing. Sigma, that's Greek. I'm not used to seeing that. So, the formulas are identical with the exception of the letters because this one is going to be for a sample because I can see that it is using sample information. So the S and the X bar for samples. And then this is going to be for a population because these are using our population variables. I can spell population. Pop U lation. There we go. All right. I don't like this color green. It's not bright enough. Let's go with red. All right, so if we are discussing coefficient of variation, which we can see right here, again, we've got two formulas. One of them is based on the sample, and one of them is based on the population, but they do the exact same thing. When I set a comparison, we can see the ratio, so standard deviation over the mean, and times 100 because it's a percent. So again, this is going to be a percent of the mean. So what I've created for us here is two sets of numbers, and those sets of numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. As you can see with the data that's been collected so far, they have very different means. This one is three, this one is 300, it's significantly larger. They have very different standard deviations. The standard deviation for our first set is only 1.58. I mean, look at the range, the total range here is only four. This has a much larger standard deviation at 158.11, and again, this is going to make sense. The data is more spread out because this goes all the way from 100 to 500. So this has a range of 400. So this is much more spread out, has a much larger standard deviation. But if I want to compare these two sets and say, what am I really looking at here? Well, if I compare the standard deviation to the mean. So CV is what I'm using to represent coefficient of variation. And we are talking, that is going to be the... Um, S, 1.58, so our standard deviation, divided by X bar, which is 3, and that's going to give us a value of, 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 where it is, oh, sorry, times 100, I should do times 100. I don't like the times 100 in the formula, but that's just me personally, um, because I understand decimals as percents, but okay, whatever, It's going to give us 52.3, 52.3 percent. Wow. Yeah, you'll have to excuse my brain. I'm going to go 52.7. <laughs> One Take Studios, it is. 52.7%. So we are saying that when we compare the amount of variation to the center of the data, we've got 52% of a variance. Well, check this out. Some of you probably already know where this is headed. Coefficient of variation, this time we take 158.11 and we divide it by 300. Again, we're doing our mean divided by our, our standard deviation divided by our mean times 100. Uh, I'm going to go get dinner after this. What are you guys doing? This is going to give me, and this is slightly different based on rounding, but honestly, once I put it together and, and completely finish my rounding, 52.7%. 
Interesting, interesting. So even though this set of data has a much larger mean and a much larger standard deviation, because they are both much larger than the first set, the amount of variation is actually strikingly similar. And so this is what coefficient of variation is doing for us. It's allowing us to compare very different data sets based on simply a comparison without units just between the spread and the mean. All right, so that is one of our applications today. The other application comes to us complements of Shebyshev and Shebyshev's theorem. I believe I'm pronouncing Shebyshev correctly. If I'm not, somebody please let me know. In class, sometimes, don't tell them, sometimes we call him Chubby Chef because, I don't know, it sounds almost the same. Don't tell him though. For Chebyshev's theorem, this guy is kind of brilliant, has made some significant uh, contributions to the world of statistics, and he's figured out that for all distributions, and yes, I do know that he's probably dead, for all distributions, the following thing is going to be true. The proportion of data within k standard deviations of the mean, k is a variable, so within k standard deviations, so within 1, within 2, within 3, standard deviations of the mean is at least 1 minus 1 over k squared. At first look, this appears really, really kind of meaningless. So let's see if we can put this together a little bit better. Um, specifically for starters, I'm going to replace k with the number 2. Because if I replace k with the number 2, then at least my brain can focus on this a little bit better. So if I am within 2 standard deviations of the mean, that means I'm doing 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. Well, 1 minus, that's 1 fourth, is 3 fourths, or 75%. So this says that if I use the number 2 in place of k, if I am within 2 standard deviations of the mean, this must contain at least 75% of my data. Which is kind of neat, because this is for all distributions. So this doesn't even matter if it's mound-shaped, if it's skewed, if it's got a gigantic variation, or if all the numbers are piled on top of each other. We're going to say at least 75% of the data is within two standard deviations. Now let's put this one step farther with numbers, and say, let's say I have a set of numbers where the mean is going to be 10 and the standard deviation is 2. So how does this work with this? Well, if my mean is 10, Within two standard deviations means that from 10, think about a number line, I'm going to go up two standard deviations, and I'm going to go down two standard deviations. So let's start by going down. If I'm at 10, and I go down two and two more, two and two more, that's going to put me, again, we're going 10 minus two twos, that's going to put us at a low of six. And if I go up, and I say that I've got 10, and then plus a standard deviation, plus another one, so plus 2, plus 2, so 10 plus 2 of my standard deviations, which puts me at 14. For this data set, which by the way, I don't have any of the specific values for this data set, I don't know how many numbers are in it, I have no idea what the distribution is, I simply know the mean and the standard deviation for this thing, I now know that at least... 75% of the data is between my numbers right here, 6 and squeeze 14. There we go. So without knowing any other numbers, just the basics here, basic summary of the data essentially, at least 75% of the numbers in this set are between 6 and 14, because 6 is two standard deviations below the mean, and 14 is two standard deviations above the mean. The interesting part about this for Shebyshev's theorem is that this doesn't need to be recalculated on a regular basis, because the numbers always work the same. So, we also happen to know then that if we are within three standard deviations, if I do one minus one over three squared, well that's one minus one ninth, that gets me at about 88.9%. So if I am within three standard deviations of the mean, that will always contain at least 88.9% of the data. And the same thing if, if k is four. If I am within four standard deviations, every time I calculate this, it's the same thing. One minus one over four squared. This is going to give us 93.8%. So if I am within four standard deviations, I have captured at least 93.8% of my data. I wrote this. This can be really kind of weird for some people. This is mu plus or minus three sigma. 
So this is my mean plus three standard deviations plus standard deviations for the high end and then minus the standard deviations for the low end of things. If I wanted to stretch this data down right here, this is saying that I'm going to go from 10, from 10, up three sets of two, up three standard deviations, and I'm going to go down three sets of two. So this takes me then from what? Three sets are going to be six up and six down, so it goes from four to 16. So between four and 16 would contain 88.9% of the data for this set. All of this looks a little bit complicated at first. Hang in there, work with it a little bit, and the more you work with, especially the strange symbols, the less crazy they become. Thank you.